What is going on Guardians and welcome back to another Destiny gameplay video. Hey, in this video we're going to be talking about Jug Shields. Juggernaut Warriors. How do you combat Jug Shoddy Warriors? What are the best strategies? Uh, what is your best option? So we're going to go through a number of scenarios here in this video and come to sort of a, a conclusion about what your best bet is. So first thing we're going to talk about is Fusion Rifles. Uh, our fusion rifle is a good option when going up against jug shields. I have said in the past that they can work and that they have worked for me and they can. But here's the thing about using a fusion rifle in my playtest environment. Uh, it can work. Is it reliable? No. It's not consistently reliable enough to be your best option. It is an option. You can um, kill a charging juggernaut shotgun warrior uh, through the jug shield with a fusion rifle but in order for that to happen a number of things have to go right uh, and those things that have to go right are outside of your control so that's the thing that sucks about it you can do everything right on your end and get the kill or you can do everything right on your end and get wrecked in the face with a shotgun <laughs> so uh, that's the thing is just, there's so many factors outside of your control so what are those factors well uh, first and foremost, what you have to understand about a fusion rifle, and I've, I've said this before, the projectiles don't fire at the same time. They fire in a sequence. So um, the thing that has to happen, here the, here's, here's the scenario that has to happen with these factors. You have to have your first two projectiles uh, register on the jug shield before the rest of your projectiles. Now, Destiny has that, that refresh rate, right? Um, and what has to happen is it has to refresh in between uh, those projectiles. So if that happens, if the game registers your first two bolts first, then that pops the jug shield. And then it starts counting the damage after that, uh, after the jug shield has popped. So your other three or four projectiles, uh, I, yeah, you need four projectiles to put them down. So uh, if they're uh, you know low enough armor, then in each new day, Ash, Ravens, uh, Plan C uh, will work. Your best bet is probably a Saladin's Vigil just for consistency's sake, yeah, to, to up your chances a little bit. That that archetype, like a, a Wizard 77 or, or a uh, Saladin's Vigil, is going to be a little bit more consistent than an E2-Day Ash Raven. Um, so, Fusion Rifle can work. It can work. But the thing is, you have to make sure that you aim low at the ankles, and you have to get that random spread of the Fusion Rifle uh, to, to be on your side. That's another factor that's outside your control. There's a little bit of RNG involved in that, so you have to have all of the pellets hit, and the game has to register the first two projectiles first, and then the rest of them. That's the thing. So fusion rifles, uh, consensus, consensus on that. They can work. They can uh, put down a charging jug shield warrior, but it's not consistently reliable enough to be your best option. Moving on, let's talk about uh, what I think is, in my playtest environment, what I think is probably one of your better bets. One of my favorite things to do, I've done this on stream, I've done this in videos, I've shown you gameplay this working in uh, the actual Crucible environment, but uh, if you quick scope the Jug Shield with a no land, you can shred a charging juggernaut shotgunner with your sidearm. Here's the thing about it that makes it so effective. A, sidearms shoot fast and do a lot of damage in a short amount of time if you register your hits. Now with a, a charging juggernaut shotgunner, they're usually really all, they're, they're committed. They are committed to running in a straight line with a shotgun. They are relying on their juggernaut shield uh, to protect them long enough to get close. Now, generally, they're skating and they don't have time to react. If you pop that shield with a quick scope, they're not going to react in time to bug out or get to cover or whatever in time for you uh, to melt them with your sidearm. So this is a pretty reliable tactic. The, the thing is, you got to hit your quick scope. Um, you know, most most people aren't starting from far away. That's why in this test environment, I'm waiting for Apex Chris. Shout out to him for being my punching bag for a while. I'm waiting for him to actually get into the courtyard where he's actually in, in relatively close quarters before I start to make my move. Because most people aren't going to start way back in that, you know, the tree courtyard, the, the bee courtyard. So I'm waiting for him to get into the courtyard with me because that's usually the distance where people are, are going to start to warrior you. So once he's in the courtyard, I can quick scope and then melt him in the straight line uh, with the sidearm. 
So does this work, um, you know, with with a hand cannon sniper loadout? Um, yeah, it can work. It's not quite as reliable because your hand cannon doesn't shoot as quickly as a um, as a sidearm. So using just a high impact hand cannon is probably not going to work out very well. You're going to trade or lose most of your engagements. Uh, you can win them from time to time if you quick scope it with like a you know your 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 regular sniper rifle and then switch to a hand cannon. Uh, if you're gonna do that strategy, we found the best bet is to use the last word with your sniper. Um, this works out a little bit more. Uh, I was trading or winning more than I was with just a regular hand cannon. Uh, with the last word, just fires fast enough. You can potentially three tap. You know, uh, so th I would recommend that if you're gonna go with this strategy, use the last word. And the thing is, we found that you won more engagements like this. Uh, if you ran single point sling, I know most people are defaulting towards using high caliber rounds on the uh, last word nowadays because of the uh, the slight increase to r the range stat. But um, in our playtest, it looked like single point sling was probably your better bet, uh, at least when you're dealing with uh, you know juggernaut warriors. And uh, you know the extended range is so small; it's nearly negligible. And when you're using a last word uh, sniper combo, usually your last word is your very close quarters weapon and you're relying on your sniper at range. So you don't need that additional range generally uh, in when you're using that loadout correctly. So uh, last word sniper can work. Can you go with just using the hand cannon? Uh, just, just firing with a hand cannon to pop the shield and then get the kill. You can if you get if you get your shots in time. If you see the warrior in time, you can shoot enough. It's going to take a couple of shots with your hand cannon to pop the shield, and then you have to you have to three tap. You have to have to three tap. You got to get your head shot uh, and a couple of bodies, or you know two head shots, one body. So uh, you've got to be accurate. Absolutely have to be accurate. You can spam your first two just to pop the shield because the shield is pretty big. Uh, it's easy to hit. But then after that, your shot's got to be on point or else you're going to get wrecked. Uh, let's talk about pulse rifles. Are pulse rifles a good option? Can you just spray it down and um, and get the win? In, in our play testing, it looked like that was not a good strategy. To use a pulse rifle just to spray it down and then and then do your, your follow-up damage. I tried with a blind perdition. And that was a terrible, terrible option. Uh, you could barely get the shield popped. Uh, you get the shield popped with, uh, you know, two, three bursts. But then after that, they're 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 too close. You're not going to get all your bursts off to kill them. So pulse rifle is a bad option. We tried with clever dragon, and you know I traded or won a couple of engagements. But generally, you're just you're not going to get your shots in in time before they wreck you. So Clever Dragon can work, but it's still not reliable, and good players are probably going to win. So can you melt the Jug Shield with your uh, Pulse Rifle and then switch to a Shotgun? That's the next question. Can you pop the pop the shield with either a Hand Cannon or a Pulse Rifle? I'm using those as examples because they're the most common yeah, uh, weapons in the Crucible right now uh, in the primary slot. Can you melt the shield with your primary and then switch to a Shotgun to kill them? The answer is generally no, because uh, without, unless you're using fitting aspects or you're a quick draw blade dancer, that is a rare, a really unreliable option. You're you're probably going to lose almost all of your engagements against a decent player who's bum rushing you with a jug shotty, um, because without quick draw, it takes way too long to pull up your uh, your shotgun. It's just not going to happen in time. That is a terrible, terrible option. If you had quick draw or the Aphidians on a warlock maybe but it's still not reliable enough to be a good strategy still not very reliable so that leaves us with the wait for it strategy whether you're using a shotgun or a sniper there's the wait for it strategy that where you're waiting for that perfect moment when the jug shield goes down when they start to ready their shotgun if you're already ads and waiting for it you can win that engagement. The thing about this strategy is that, yeah, it can work, but your timing has to be flawless. If your timing is off, you're screwed. Uh, if you shoot too early, the Juggernaut Shield tanks the shotgun damage. If you fire too late, you're you're dead. You know. 
So you have to get that timing perfectly right with the shotgun. If you're using a sniper rifle, this is considerably less reliable. I have montaged people by doing the wait for it strategy with the sniper rifle where I, I time that that uh, CQC sniper shot right at the perfect moment and get the headshot. I have done that before, but it is a rare occurrence because uh, getting the headshot in that close quarters is already hard enough, let alone when there's the pressure of getting the timing perfectly right. I mean, they gotta be like right up in your face uh, when you pull that trigger and it has to be on point. Uh, and at that, at that distance with the refresh rate, you may trade or uh, they may hit you with their shotgun before your shot registers, so you get a little bit of barrel flinch and you're screwed. So the wait for it strategy, not your best bet at all. Uh, with a shotgun, it's a little bit more reliable. With a sniper, considerably less reliable. Um, you're just kind of throwing a Hail Mary at that point. So what's the best option? Well, if you're gonna stand your ground, wait for it with a shotgun, uh, works if you get that timing right that is a decent option um, otherwise I think your best bet is if you have a sniper to quick scope you start with the sniper quick scope the shield switch to your primary uh, and then also back pedal you got to back pedal now my my uh, ideal way to combat this when I see people on the other team, in trials especially, using Juggernaut Shoddy, um, what I tend to do is I rely mostly on the no land sidearm combo. The no land is just so easy to quick scope uh, accurately. It's got snapshot, so you quick scope that shield and then you switch to a sidearm, and sidearm is just so much better than any other primary out there at melting a running in a straight line shotgunner. So you melt the shield, switch to the, the, the sidearm, and then just bop, 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 bop. They're running in a straight line. They're committed at that point to the shotgun kill. They're usually not going to break their course, and if they do, it's an easy kill for you. So uh, landing your shots when they're running in that straight line after you pop their shield is really easy to do. So I think this is the best bet. I would fall off the log and say this is the best bet. If you're going against Juggernaut Shoddy Warriors, no land sidearm is probably your best bet. Um, that's where I would fall off the log. If you have a fusion, you may just stand your ground and uh, and go for it. But I would I would encourage you to throw some mobility in there. Try and juke, try and move, uh, get your shot off, and then shade step or or instantly jump uh, backwards in a way. Um, another thing I would say is don't stand your ground. If you're not comfortable with any of the options you have when a guy is charging you, use your vertical space. Uh, jumping up over their heads is usually usually a great option because Titan skating uh, doesn't have a lot of vertical movement to it. So, so it's all horizontal. Um, so they're going to be moving in a straight line. So if you get high enough, you can negate that that shield entirely um, and make them actually if you go high they're going to ready their weapon earlier they're gonna they're gonna drop the shield themselves so going high with like a hand cannon would probably be a really good option or high with a shotgun uh, would be a really good option I like to go high over them with my fusion rifle because I have Icarus on it uh, so that's a really good uh, strategy as well you force them to drop the jug shield so take the jug shield out of the picture so hopefully this was helpful for you guys. Hopefully you know a little bit more about how the Jug Shield works, how much damage it can tank, what your best options are when going up against it. Uh, definitely feel free to leave a comment in the comment section on your thoughts. And we'll catch you in the Crucible.